Hello everyone, now welcome back. In this video, we're going to explore sampling methods, which are really essential for selecting representative groups in biostatistics. Now, since we can't often study an entire population as we talked about, we rely on samples to make valid conclusions. But choosing the right sampling method is the crucial part. We want to ensure that our data is accurate, that it is reliable and unbiased. So in this video, we'll cover the types of sampling methods, which include random, stratified, systematic, and cluster sampling. We will also cover sampling bias and how to avoid it using our sample, which can truly represent the population. Now, by the end of this lesson, you'll understand how to select a valid sample and minimize bias in biostatistics. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so first things first, let's go over the different ways we can actually select a sample. There's no one size fits all here. And the best choice depends on your situation. There is simple random sampling, which you might hear it called SRS, and probably the one that sounds most familiar. Basically, everyone in the population has an equal chance of being chosen in this type of sampling. So let's say you want to do a survey of hospital patients. What you do is assign a number to each patient and then use a random number generator, like random.org or even a spreadsheet function, just to pick, say, 100 patients totally at random. The good news about this is that it reduces bias and gives you a truly random sample. The downside is, though, is that it can be kind of tricky to pull off if you're dealing with a huge population or if you don't have a full list of everyone. So this works great when you have a complete list and can randomly select people from it. Okay, but let's talk about stratified sampling now. Now this one's a little more strategic, as the name implies. Here's the idea. You divide the population into subgroups called strata based on something they have in common. Then you randomly sample from each of those groups. For example, let's say you're studying cholesterol levels and want to make sure all age groups are represented. You might split people into certain age ranges like 20 to 30 or 31 to 40 and so on. And then randomly, you can pick people from each group. It really is great for making sure you don't accidentally overlook a specific group, but it's a little more work to set up. You'll need to decide on the strata and make sure you sample from each one correctly. So stratified sampling is really helpful when you're worried that certain groups may get lost in the mix using just simple random sampling. All right, next we have systematic sampling, and this one is based on intervals. Let's say you have a list of 500 patients and you only need 50. What you could do is select every 10th person on the list. So you'd start at a random point and then just pick every 10th name. That is systematic sampling. It's really easy to do and gives you a nice spread across the list. But there's a catch. If there's a hidden pattern in your list, say like the 10th person always being from a certain department or demographic, whatever it might be, you could introduce bias without even realizing it. So just be careful with that. Now, a lot of quality control studies use this method like inspecting every 10th item on assembly line. So you can think about it like that. Now, cluster sampling is a little different. Instead of picking individuals, you divide the population into groups called clusters. And then you randomly pick entire clusters to include in your sample. So let's say you're doing a mental health survey in schools. And instead of randomly picking students, you randomly pick classrooms and then survey everyone in those selected classrooms. It's super efficient, especially when your population is big and spread out. But if your clusters aren't diverse enough, say one classroom is mostly seniors and another is all freshmen, then you could accidentally introduce bias again here. All right, so now we know the how of sampling. Let's talk about how we can go wrong. And that's where sampling bias comes in. Again, bias happens when your sample doesn't actually reflect the population. And that means your results might lead you to totally wrong conclusions, which you know definitely is not ideal. Let's go through a few option types. There is non-response bias. This is where some individuals have a better chance of being picked than others, whether you realize it or not. For example, if you're doing a study on physical fitness, but only survey people at the gym, you're missing out on individuals who don't work out. So your data would obviously be skewed toward fitter people. Then there's voluntary response bias. 
And this one happens when certain groups just don't respond. Maybe they're too busy or the survey format doesn't work for them. Maybe if you're doing a survey about depression via email, the people who are most affected may not respond at all. And this affects your results. When they're voluntary, it sometimes causes a problem reaching the groups you tend to reach and get the data that you want and need. Then finally, there's voluntary response bias. Now this happens when people choose to participate, usually because they have strong feelings about something. You see, there's a lot of online polls and people with strong opinions on politics, as an example, are more likely to respond. While the more neutral folks, they just skip it. So the results end up looking way more extreme than they actually are. So how do we avoid this sampling bias? Great ways are to use random sampling whenever possible to ensure the sample size is large enough. Also to follow up with non-respondents to reduce missing data and also to ensure diverse representation in the sample. All right, so to wrap it up, Today, we talked about the four major sampling methods, random, stratified, systematic, and cluster. And we also covered sampling bias, what it looks like and how to avoid it. And choosing the right sampling method and avoiding bias is what makes your research solid, correct, reliable, and important. It's like the foundation. If your sample is off, your whole study could crumble. But now you know the basics. You're in a much better position to do it and to do it right.